Hey guys, welcome to Pool Nation Podcast and PoolManUniversity.com. Today we're talking to Bob Lowry. At the end of this video, we're going to have a listing of his training certification that he's doing and we'll have the dates, we'll have the times on there. So watch to the end of this video. Bob, I wanted to ask you, why does sodium bromide eat so much of my pool's chlorine? Well, you know, sodium bromide is used in a number of of uh, algae products. Um, it's used in actually another couple of products that are not branded as an algicide, but most of them are branded as an algicide. And you should look on the label of these products to see if the, the active ingredient is sodium bromide. Um, so that's the first thing, just check to see that it is. But what happens is when you put sodium bromide in water, the the salt, sodium bromide, similar to sodium chloride, uh, dissolves in water and makes a sodium ion and a bromide ion. And the bromide ion is in the water, but when you oxidize a bromide ion, it creates hypobromous acid, which is a killing form of bromine. And it takes a surprisingly small amount of energy to do that. So. Uh, if you put sodium bromide in the pool, you could add an oxidizer, such as a non-chlorine shock, and it would make sodium bromide. Um, you could add ozone, it would do the same thing. You could actually add hydrogen peroxide, it would do the same thing. But when you add chlorine, all of the chlorine that you put in the pool now works on, on changing the bromide into hyperbromous acid and you no longer have a chlorine pool. And so this is important to understand. While sodium bromide is a great algicide, when you mix it with chlorine, it makes hyperbromous acid, and hyperbromous acid can kill the algae pretty well for a number of reasons. First of all, it's a smaller molecule. Second of all, it's something that the algae is not already used to. It's already used to some amount of chlorine. So, so it's not used to bromine, so, so it'll work a little better. So, um, so it makes a great algicide, but the hyperbromous acid, when it's finished being hyperbromous acid, it goes back to being a bromide ion. So when you introduce some more chlorine, it makes hyperbromous acid. And then the hyperbromous acid works on bacteria and gets killed by the sunlight, and then it goes back to bromide ion, and you do this whole thing and it just keeps going around and the bromide never goes out of the pool. But bromide is subject to being destroyed by sunlight, just like chlorine is. But cyanuric acid doesn't work for bromine. And the, the loss to sunlight, the UV loss to sunlight for bromide or for hyperbromous acid is 65% in two hours. So you can have bromide in the pool, add some chlorine, and, and two hours later, 65% of it's gone, is back to being bromide. And two hours later, 65% of that is gone. So in about five hours, the chlorine that you put in this morning is gone. And so, and so you'll be going through large amounts of chlorine and won't be knowing why, because you don't have algae. You can't see anything that's, that you've had a good reading, so you don't have bacteria and stuff using it up. So you begin to wonder if there's some other reason. And the other reason is that there's bromide in the pool. And the bromide doesn't go away. The only thing that makes it go away is dilution. And, and so even if you only have one part per million of bromide in the pool, it'll take one part per million of chlorine to work against it. So it's possible that you can have a pool with a mixture. You could have say two parts per million of chlorine, one part per million of bromine, except that as the bromide goes away for whatever reason, whether it's killing stuff or oxidizing things, or it's being destroyed by sunlight, when it goes away, some of the chlorine that's left converts more of the bromide into hyperbromous acid. So it doesn't separate and then stay that way. <laughs> the hypochlorous acid becomes hyperbromous acid. And, and so, so it's a continuous cycle. 
it's a continuous cycle until the bromide is gone. And, and I've heard some chemical companies that make sodium bromide say, well, it's not enough bromide to use up all of your chlorine. And the answer is, yes, it is. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I'll confess, Bob, if you add it the way that I added it to my pools, then yes, it probably was converting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, no doubt. Because many guys with, with algicides, a little bit is, is okay and more is better. <laughs> That's right. That's always the thought process. That's great. So guys, today we're talking to Bob Lowry, uh, and he is the founder of the Pool Chemistry Training Institute. At the end of this video, we're going to have some dates that he'll be doing some training classes for and some certifications, and uh, especially now this year that a lot of our shows have been canceled due to COVID, so we'll have those at the end of this video. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learned a little bit about sodium bromide and why it takes so much of your chlorine. Guys, we'll see you in the next one.